we will continue our discussion on structure of an atom so so far what uh, we have learned is that atomic nature of of matter second is a uh, constituent of an atom that we have seen the electron proton and neutron right and then then third is uh, we started about the structure of of an atom right so so first uh, we have seen in 1907 thomson's model where it was considered that this positive charge is distributed in a in a sphere and electrons are embedded at definite position or a particular position in in this uh, uh, positively charged uh, sphere. So, so but this uh, model was failure because what was the drawbacks of this model? Drawbacks of this model is basically it cannot explain it cannot explain atomic spectra the simplest atomic spectra that I I told that hydrogen or I can I can draw here hydrogen spectra the simplest spectra these are the brightest uh, spectral lines so this uh, this wavelength is uh, i think 5 6 uh, 3 6 5 6 uh, 6 3 angstrom sorry 6 5 6 3 angstrom 6 5 6 3 angstrom is basically red color red color line and then next one was uh, 4861 4861 61 angstrom the other one 4340 4340 angstrom and 4101 this one 4101 angstrom and this limit that was uh, 3646 3646 angstrom angstrom right so that was the spectra this color was this uh, 
red, green, blue, violet, red, green, blue, violet. Okay. And these are the very bright uh, color lines and uh, this uh, is also generally people call as a H alpha line, H beta line, H gamma line, H uh, uh, delta line. Right. So, atomic structure we are looking for uh, for uh, for explaining the atomic spectrum at least there is a uh, simplest one hydrogen spectra. So, the structure should be such that it should explain this hydrogen spectra. So, in that taking that uh, uh, motivation, so this uh, different model was proposed and uh, it was uh, cancelled due to uh, the lack of lack of the capability of explaining the hydrogen spectra. So, it cannot explain hydrogen spectra right. Why? Because this it was considered it was postulated that this electrons at a definite position it, it, it is not at rest it will oscillate it will oscillate and it will radiate. So, so that radiation is basically is uh, we will get as a as a spectral lines, but hydrogen atom has uh, only one electron. So, it can oscillate only at a particular frequency. So, we should get only one line or we can or it can oscillate actually at a particular frequency and with higher harmonics. This if frequency is new then other frequency can be 2 new, 3 new etcetera. So, but this higher harmonics higher frequency lines should be very weak, but, uh, but uh, in hydrogen spectrum we have seen this all lines are very bright as well as there is no such correlation with the among these uh, spectral lines right. It is not this frequency of this line is not double of the other one or triple of the other one. So, it is the it was the drawbacks of this uh, model. So, uh, this model was not uh, uh, successful. So, then then in 1911 Rutherford model Rutherford's model. What was that model? So, Rutherford told that uh, this actually uh, experimentally found that all mass concentrated in a in a very small uh, volume in the in the atom. So, he considered that that nucleus uh, and negative charge electrons. So, electrons will revolve in a in a orbit around the nucleus just much like to the planets revolving surrounding the um, sun in uh, particular orbit right. So, similar to planet solar system so, electron is equivalent to the planet and nucleus is equivalent to the sun. So, that that was the taking that similarity he proposed that type of uh, model. So, nucleus all mass are here and electrons electrons will rotate in different orbit right. So, but problem was that when electron charge particle 
is uh, rotating, so it is accelerated. So, any accelerated charged particle it emit radiation. So, when it will emit radiation its velocity will decrease. So, as if so its velocity will decrease and is uh, it will follow the spiral path and it will finally, fall in the nucleus. So, negative charge and positive charge they cannot stay together. So, atom will destroy will get destroyed. Okay. So, the drawbacks of this Rutherford model was so lack of stability of the lack of stability of, of, of the atom of the atom right and then then also that it cannot it cannot explain the hydrogen spectra atomic spectra it cannot explain it cannot explain atomic spectra it is a hydrogen spectra. Okay. So, so next uh, actually we started to discuss that next model is basically Bohr model in 1913. Bohr model. So, Bohr was basically the student of Rutherford, he was working in Rutherford's laboratory. So, that in last class I started to discuss that Bohr model. So, let us uh, continue. So, Bohr as I told that Bohr took a bold step considering the uh, combining the Rutherford model, combining the Rutherford model that was basically this electrons will rotate electrons will rotate in a orbit like planet surrounding the uh, nucleus so he considered that rutherford model and uh, second he considered planck Planck's uh, hypothesis of quantization or Planck's quanta also we tell Planck's quanta what was that Planck's quanta. So, actually that time it was very this black body radiation black body radiation It was experimentally it was found that if I plot uh, if I plot frequency versus this uh, energy density. So, say energy density u at a particular temperature and then if I write nu this uh, in black body radiation this uh, energy of uh, of energy of uh, unit radiation energy of unit radiation per unit time 
and at a particular uh, uh, temperature. So, this uh, the distribution is, is like this. Sorry. So, at different temperatures T1, T2, T3. So, T3 is greater than T2 is greater than T1, right. So, higher temperature the density increases and it was found that this maximum density at a particular frequency. So, with temperature this it is decrease new max frequency correspond to the maximum intensity or density it decrease it decrease in case of wavelength it increase maximum intensity at at a at at, at a wavelength it's uh, it's increase so that was the experimental observation and then it was trying to explain it was trying to explain um, for a long time so actually to explain that one so uh, the stephens stephens law uh, you know this uh, uh, it's uh, uh, i think that's uh, total energy u u t it's uh, for for all wavelength it's uh, sigma t to the power 4 okay and then i think uh, uh, this uh, vines displacement law vines displacement law vines displacement law lambda m into t equal to constant ok. So, what a new m corresponding this lambda m uh, maximum density at, at this wavelength. So, with temperature it, it shifted. So, it is lambda m become higher at lower temperature ok just opposite frequency is uh, higher at sorry frequency is higher new m maximum intensity or density is higher at at this frequency so this frequency into temperature is constant not into temperature so, this new is uh, C by lambda m. So, C by lambda m. So, in terms of so that you one can convert to uh, to new this new is basically uh, you know lambda lambda new equal to C. So, one can replace lambda m equal to C new ok C new. So, this so this new will be uh, I can write new m corresponding this uh, maxima. So, new m can be replaced by c by uh, lambda m lambda m can be replaced by c by new m ok. So, so that way t by then one can write t by new m equal to constant. So, anyway, so Vines displacement law it is either in terms of frequency or in terms of lambda one can write. So, that was the uh, uh, Vines displacement law and then Rayleigh genes distribution, Rayleigh genes distribution.
religions distribution of this of this uh, of the spectral energy okay so uh, basically this it is it is distributed following this curve following this curve so Rayleigh genes they try to try to uh, theoretically they try to find out the formula uh, to to explain this curve but but all attempts so these are basically is uh, it's uh, it was not able to completely explain this curve so partly it was able to explain so this theory was not complete so then the Planck's then Planck's was able to explain this curve so i will not go into details so it was he was able to explain this curve because he postulates that he postulates that that's actually black body radiation so this radiation is coming from the from the surface of the of the cavity so on in surface there are atoms there are electrons okay so oscillation of these atoms or electrons that basically emit radiation and that radiation fill the cavity and that is the way of, uh, basically black body radiation and they, they uh, their distribution is like this. Okay. So, he postulates that this, this oscillation of, of this electrons or atoms on the surface of the cavity it is not continuous it cannot its energy is not continuous okay so they can oscillate only with discrete energy discrete energy and that energy e is n h mu okay n equal to 1 2 3 etc integer okay so oscillator which which emit radiation the oscillator oscillates with some energy that is h nu 2 h nu 3 h nu okay or then uh, 2 h nu one can one can think h nu by 2 so frequency will be half okay so that was the postulates and first postulates about the discreteness of of of, um, of energy or discreteness of of our uh, which is which was not conventional concept which was not classical concept uh, because there is no reason why it will oscillate with some particular uh, energy why it will not oscillates with all all energy so as the it is the this uh, classical concept continuity continuous value is uh, is permitted either it can be energy it can be velocity it can be angular momentum whatever so he introduced first time that about the against the classical concept so that's the but so that's why 1900 basically or 1901 is that year is taken as a as a birth year of of quantum mechanics okay quantum concept okay so so that uh, that energy is not continuous energy is quantized so so this concept of quanta discreteness that concept was taken by Bohr okay so that's a Planck's quanta quantization of, of, of energy or, or uh, any physical parameter. So, that concept was taken and third concept was taken that Einstein's Einstein's uh, photo or uh, Einstein's uh, photon or quantization of foot Einstein's quanta 
okay einstein's quanta so einstein's uh, quanta means to explain the photoelectric effect so that was not possible to explain from the classical concept because when light is falling on a metal surface and it emits electron and the kinetic energy of the electron it was expected that this kinetic energy of the electron should increase when the when the uh, intensity when the intensity of the of the light is increased okay but it was not observed intensity was increased but energy of the uh, ejected electron from the metal surface kinetic energy it was not increased okay so why it should increase energy because uh, intensity is higher means this uh, you see this uh, uh, elect electric component of light electric component of light right you know this light has two component electric and magnetic component okay so this electric component of light this amplitude increase so it in intensity also increase so when its amplitude increase so force force on the electron that is e e force so force will increase on the on the on the electron which electron the electron on uh, of, of metal surface okay so it's uh, when force acting on this electron so it uh, that ejected electrons its kinetic energy should increase so whenever light intensity is increased e increase so uh, kinetic energy of the electron emitted or ejected electron should increase but experimentally this found no it is not the case so rather it depends on the this kinetic energy depends on the wave, wavelength of light or frequency of light okay and then uh, einstein considered that this light again it is basically quantized okay so this quanta is is called photon this quanta is called photon photon and its energy is basically h nu okay h nu it is quantized Okay. It depends on frequency, its energy will depend on the frequency. So, it is not the intensity, it is the this uh, photoelectric effect that it, it uh, kinetic energy of that electron it depends on the frequency of the light. Okay. So, to explain this photoelectric effect, Einstein cons considered that quantization of light and that quantity is photon. And there is difference between the Planck's and Einstein this quanta Planck's actually considered the uh, quantization of the oscillator and this it radiates the uh, radiation or light or whatever. Okay. So, that is uh, it will be it will have the same frequency of the oscillator. Okay. So, so uh, Bohr actually uh, he combined this three concept he combined these three concepts and gave, gave three postulates gave three postulates one is first postulate is first postulate is basically now electron will rotate electron will rotate or revolve only in some only some definite orbit only some definite orbit which orbit the angular momentum of that orbit of the electron in that orbit that will be quantized so that has to be a l equal to n h cross okay h cross is basically h by 2 pi H cross okay. so, n equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So, those orbits are permitted, orbits are quantized, those orbits are permitted that is its angular momentum 
has to be equal to n x cos. Okay. So, second postulate was second postulate was was when it will rotate in the definite orbit which follows this this quantization. So, it will not emit any radiation. So, it will not emit any radiation. So, no radiation, no radiation when it is revolving in the particular orbit, okay. definite orbit which comes from the first postulate and third postulate was third postulate was. So, when electron will jump from one orbit to the other orbit. Okay. So, then the energy difference between these two orbit that will come as a radiation that will come as a radiation okay. and that. So, basically if it just jump from one energy one orbit it has energy and the second orbit. So, let me write E 2 minus E 1. Okay. So, then it will emit radiation and that radiation is the energy will be H nu. Okay. So, radiation only possible when it jumps it from one energy level to the other energy level. Okay. So, that was the three postulates and we will we will see that considering these three postulates we will get formula expression of energy which is able to explain this hydrogen spectra. So, I will stop here and then I will continue in next class. Thank you.